Hello everyone. Learning to write or improving it is easy. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can do that. It's an important and crucial skill in your academic as well as professional life. And it's not as difficult as most people would have you believe. Just 30 minutes of practice daily and I can promise you some massive gains and improvement in this skill. First things first, in speaking, you communicate your ideas through sounds orally. But in writing, you'll be doing the same thing, exactly the same thing, in written symbols. So that's the only difference. In speaking, you argue, you give examples, you give explanations, you give a report, all that. In writing, you're going to do exactly the same thing. So it's not much different. The only difference is that the writer requires a slightly different process. And if you discover that and you follow these tips, you are going to be a great writer without a problem. So what is that process? Tip number one, always do pre-writing activities before you start writing. The most important skill to improve your writing is doing pre-writing activities. I'm going to stress on this tip so much. I'm going to give lots of time to this because this is the most crucial and the most important one. What is the meaning of pre-writing activities? It means that you think of the ideas that you want to include in your writing. Write down a list of those ideas and think of the main points and the explanations and the examples that you would be including. Once you have done that, and then start writing. Pre-writing activities means that gathering the ideas, making a plan of the writing, what would be your first paragraph, what would be your details, how you would give the examples, how you give sequencing to, the, to your ideas. But why is it necessary? Why is it worth all the time? Many students would just directly like to get started with the writing instead of wasting their time in thinking of the ideas. I know many students would hate to do this. They would say, why not to directly start writing instead of wasting time in thinking about these ideas? But tell you what, those students who are new, they hit mental blocks and they're not able to expand their ideas. Even if sometimes you discover a good point, but you're not able to expand it, and you sometimes in the middle of the writing think, what to do next, where to go next? You cannot skip this part and there are reasons why. Firstly, you may write two paragraphs and then later think, oh, I should have written this idea in the first paragraph because it's not important there. But it's too late now. You'll have to erase and then rewrite. It will waste much of your valuable time. Firstly, you may write two paragraphs and then later you think that, oh, whatever I wrote in the second paragraph should have been the part of the first paragraph. And then you will have to go back and rewrite and erase. That's going to waste a lot of time. Or you have written an idea, but the explanation is irrelevant. Or perhaps your complete paragraph is off the topic and totally irrelevant. It could also be that you missed to add a point or your explanation is inadequate or you forgot to give example and there are many other issues that you can face due, due to improper planning. You will hit snags and you will have mental blocks and you won't be able to continue or you expand your ideas. So if you want to avoid these problems, always do brainstorming, always think of the ideas before start writing. And there are many ways you can do these pre-writing activities in fact. The number one is uh, questioning. You generate ideas and details by asking questions about your subject or topic. Uh, such questions may include why, where, when, who, and how. You can also make list of the ideas. And when you're making the list of the ideas, do not think that you have to include only the correct ideas. Just let, let the ideas come, as many ideas as you think would be relevant to your, with your writing. Once you, you have made the list, do some addition and deletion and, and pick the most relevant ones and include them in your writing. You can also do branching. Branching means that write down first idea and create further branches out of that ideas. This will give you plenty of ideas to start with. Once you're past this one particular step of brainstorming, you will be able to write without a stop. Tip number two is expand your ideas. Do not give a list of points to your reader. 
What I mean is that if you are, for example, writing advantages, instead of giving lots of advantages in your essay or in your paragraphs, it is better that you pick one advantage, give complete explanation and examples, and then complete the paragraph. Or if you are giving causes of something, instead of writing so many causes, pick one cause and explain that how that cause is a cause. And you can add some examples if you want to. If you do that, you would find it easy to expand and write bigger essays and bigger paragraphs. Tip number three is put yourself in your reader's shoes. What this means is that when you are speaking, the people in front of you may ask you any explanation if they don't understand your point, or they may ask you to give examples to prove your point. But when you are writing, your reader does not have the luxury to ask you what you mean. So it's better to add the explanations or add examples so the reader does not get confused. And if he or she has any questions, the exa examples and explanations are there to explain. Think of the questions that their readers may have and include the answers already. So everything is clear to the reader because you want to explain things to the, to the reader. You're not writing it for yourself. You're writing for somebody to understand. So in order to communicate effectively all the explanations, everything should be there in advance. Tip number four is take your first step. Many people would keep waiting to, to learn to be a perfect writer before they start writing. This is not going to happen. I always stress that if you want to learn something, you should start doing it even if how bad it is. It works like a magic trick. For example, if somebody wants to learn how to drive a car, do you think that he should go through the books and continue reading until he has complete idea about the car and then start driving? Do you think that if he has a complete understanding, will he, that person be able to drive a car right from the very first minute? or would easily go to a Formula One racing? Or perhaps there is a person who wants to be a chef, a great cook. Should he go through all the cookery books and watch the cookery programs and right after that he will become a master chef? No. Every person has to start from somewhere and writing is no exception. Take a piece of paper and pen, get started and start writing and things will start improving by itself. Don't wait for any perfect day to start writing with. I would recommend that you start writing from smaller texts. Write down one sentence and two sentences and one paragraph. Another great way to get started is writing journals. At the end of the evening, instead of scrolling through your social media endlessly, it is better to do something productive and take a piece of paper and write, your, uh, write about your day. What did you do during the day? What things you learned? What things you observed? This journal can serve as a continuing source of ideas for writing. So writing has to be started if you want to be a good writer. The next tip is to write in simple vocabulary. Most of the new writers believe that great writing is synonymous with beautiful, exuberant, and thick vocabulary, which is not the case. Your writing should be clear. Your purpose should be clear communication idea of the ideas. Do you think when you're speaking, your purpose is to impress your listener with your beautiful vocabulary? Or you want to impress the other people with your ideas? You want to convey a message. Message is important, not the great vocabulary. And tell you what, when you're lost in your great vocabulary, you're not able to communicate your ideas in an effective way. So change your view of writing. The purpose of writing is not to show off your language. The purpose is to communicate your ideas in a way that the other people find them easy to understand. Plus, if you are saying something in a language that's too difficult to understand, it's all flying over the heads of the reader. And the very basic purpose of communication is lost. So keep your focus on simplicity, clarity, because the basic purpose of the writing is to communicate. It's your language which must follow your ideas and not the other way around. If you're thinking of the words first and then thinking of the ideas later, this is not going to be a great piece of writing. It's just full of words and I have seen that those people who write for great words 
people, the readers usually lose interest in their writing. So your best bet is keep things simple, clear and communicative. The next thing is be yourself. Wake up a writer in yourself. Instead of copying the ideas from here and there, find inspirations from your own life. Do observations, make lots of observations. Think around you, think about your people around you, think about, about the events happening around you and take examples from there and include them in your writing. Because if you're copying ideas from other people, you would never be able to be a creative independent writer. All great writers are creative writers. They are not copiers. Your personality must be reflected in your writing and once you start doing this, you would find your writing more personal and you would be proud of them. Although you're, all your life you have been thinking of copying other people's ideas and putting them on the paper, so you might think that creating your own ideas might be very difficult. But actually, thinking of your own ideas is easier. If you think your ideas, writing would become a very simple process. When you are speaking, are you copying somebody's ideas or you are thinking of your own ideas and generating them? I'm sure your answer is that you're thinking and speaking your own mind. Why writing should be an exception? Why not to write your own ideas? Once you have written your piece of writing, read it as a reader and think where you needed to add explanation and think of the areas which are weak and not giving the complete ideas. And as a reader, where are you finding things confusing? So next time, try to add explanations at that point. So once you start reading your writing as a reader, you would find the issues and the problems and the weaknesses in a much easier way. You would be able to identify your weak areas and weak points. And next time you're writing, keep those weak areas in your mind and give some extra attention there. Another important thing is to prepare the key phrases. Key phrases means that, for example, if you're writing advantages and disadvantages, think of the words that you can use instead of the advantages. For example, benefits, upsides, plus points, pros and cons. And if you're writing solutions, what words can help you uh, to write solutions? For example, one way to deal with the situation is the problem can be addressed by. So using these keywords and phrases, uh, it will be easier for you to, to pay more attention to the other ideas and not the language itself during the process of writing. Lastly, and most importantly, if you want to learn how to write an application, read sample answers of application. This is a shortest and quickest way of learning ideas and words and format and the organization of those pieces of writing. You will quickly be able to learn key phrases and formalities, how to start, how to end, for example, Sometimes it really helps if you read some samples of that kind. You'll quickly learn their different elements. That's a sure way of having a flying start. Like if you want to learn how to write a report of IELTS writing task 1, read the sample answers written by the examiner. This experience of reading will help you discover many things that you didn't know before. In the end, do not wait tomorrow to start writing. I'm going to give you a question. So write down your answer on this and paste it here as your first piece of writing. The question is, what are the advantages and disadvantages of living in a big city? Think of the ideas, do some pre-writing activities and develop your answers. Once you have written it, you can paste them in the comments below. I'll have a look at it and I'll give you suggestions how you can further improve it. Take care, best of luck, goodbye.